Well, I got the frets uh, polished and got linseed oil on the uh, fretboard. I got, boy, that's some beautiful rosewood in that thing. Check that out. Uh, the frets are, like I say, there's a little bit of wear up here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see them with such shininess, but uh, there's, this is probably the worst fret right here, the third one. See, you can see some tiny dents in that. They're not very bad, but it's going to need a fret job before. I don't know. Depends on how much it's played. But at least I finally did get the, the frets polished and got the uh, linseed oil on the board between all the other fucking shit going on here in the background and all the time, 24-7. It's amazing you get anything done sometimes, but there it is. Looks much better. Now we're going to put new strings on it. I'll bring you back for that. Boy, look how, how pretty that Rhodes wood is. Beautiful wood. Beautiful frets. They look really nice. So hold on. I'm going to string it up. All right. Well, we got new strings on. We put these on it. That's a uh, 12 to 54. I think that's about what it had on it before. And we're going to check everything again now. It's up to pitch. So we're going to check the nut action first. I have 18 thousandths here. And I think you can see that that just glides right in there. All but the third string. There again, the third string is a little bit lower than the rest of them. But you can see how slick that goes in there. It's just perfect. See what I mean? So we have 18 thousandths. The third string, like I say, is a little bit tighter. There you go. It's probably more like 16 thousandths. We've got neck relief at 10 thousandths. Now I normally set this at 12. But uh, I'm going to show you why I have it set at 10 here in a few minutes. Let me find the 10. There we go. There again, I'm going to note the 15th fret. Instead of the 17th, because of all this fall away back here, I know it's flat down the right to the 15th fret, so I'm going to start right there. This is a 10, and you can see that just goes in there perfectly, man. It just fits. Look at that. So, now that was a 4,000th before. If you remember, before I did anything to the guitar, it was 4,000th. Now it's it's set at ten thousandths now, and that's perfect. See that just it's perfect, man. It's not hanging up on the string if I get it in there flat. See? So we are at ten thousandths there. 18 thousandths nut action. Let's check the action now. See where we finally ended up at. The action on this guitar right now is set just about as low as it is ever going to go. And I'll show you why in a few minutes. I've got some bad news. 70 thousandths on the upper low base E string at the 12th fret. 70 thousandths. The high E string is uh, uh, 60 thousandths. Actually, it's 50, 50 thousandths on the high E string at the 12th fret. Let's see what that is equivalent to in 64s. Okay, we are exactly at 564 on the low E string. 564 so that's a 12th fret probably I was going to say probably 464 is here and it is dead on the money maybe just a C hair more than 464 but it, I'm going to call it 464 464 on the high E 12th fret 564 on the low E to 12th fret that action is really really down there if you can see that uh, I can't see the camera well enough to tell when I'm in line. I think maybe right in there. 
action is very, very low. But we have some uh, severe problems to talk about. Uh, let me gather up some tools here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Well, first off, here's something that I never accounted for, and I never even checked for because uh, the uh, action was so low when the thing first came here. You know, I never even thought about this being a problem. Now, I'm just coming down the uh, center of the fretboard. You can see straight edge hitting on the bridge right there. It does it between all strings. See what I mean? Uh, between the fourth and fifth. Between the fifth and sixth. It is just, uh, it's not very much, but it is hitting. That straight edge should slide right over top of the bridge, like so, and all the way up to the saddle, like that. That's the way it should fit between every string, like this right here, there. It should hit the saddle, not the bridge. Now if I pull it out, I'm pulling it out, watch it drop down, see that? See it fall down? Then it hits on the bridge. That means this guitar is really very, 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 very close to needing a neck reset. Hold on, I'll show you something else. Okay, first, let me tell you what I'm doing here. I've got a dial indicator on a straight edge here, okay? Just a dial indicator on a straight edge. Now, if you can see that meter there, I, don't, I doubt you can see the meter, but i just got the straight edge laying flat on the fretboard, and I'm holding it down here. The meter is uh, on zero. It's zeroed in. You can't see it, I'm sure. I don't think you can, but it's zeroed in. Right there is zero. Okay, all I'm going to do is slide down here and put the meter onto the bridge and hold the uh, straight edge down. Actually, oh yeah, that'll work too. And I'm going to show you the difference in the plane of the bridge and the plane of the fretboard. So hold on. Hopefully you're going to be able to see this okay. Like I say, with the meter on the... Uh, on the fretboard. Let's see if you can see that. No, you can't. Shit. Well, I can't show it to you. The meter is on zero when I get back past that last fret. There it is. It's on zero exactly. Okay? So if I slide the meter right on back here now, um, I don't know if you can see the meter. Here is zero, and we're on ten. That means there's ten thousandths difference in the plane of this fretboard and the plane of the uh, the plane of the fretboard, the plane of the bridge. Let me see if I can get that a little bit better for you. Kind of look at it at an angle here. Hopefully you can see that. It's exactly on ten thousandths right there. Well, I'm kind of on the string. Hold on. There. There's ten thousandths holding it flat down. I mean, if I just breathe on it, it changes. But that's ten thousandths. Now, like I say, zero, that's on ten. Right here is where the zero is. So I'm, uh, if I go back up here onto the fretboard... I get everything leveled up here on the fretboard, you can see the meter is at zero right there. I hope you can see that. We are at zero there. And all I got to do is just slide this straight down here, rest it on the, uh, the bridge just like I showed you. And uh, you can see the meter jump from, let me get it, everything flat and square here. There, you can see it jump from 0 up to 10. At least I hope you can see it. I can't change the angle of it any more than that. But 
right there it is maxing out at ten thousandths so the uh, plane of the bridge here is ten thousandths higher than the plane of the fretboard the plane of the bridge here on the very top of the bridge the plane of the bridge is ten thousandths higher than the plane of the fretboard is okay that could be, I'm thinking that whoever glued all those braces back inside of here, they didn't mess with, you know, trying to get the belly out of it. Uh, let me show you the belly it has. You can see right here, I think. Uh, let me get honed in on this a little better. Yeah, I think you can see that. Check that out. Quite a bit of belly, see? On both sides. On this side and over there. I could measure that too. Uh, but I'm thinking whoever glued these braces back in this guitar didn't uh, either didn't know that because this sunk in, the, the top had to react some way. How did it react to that sinking in? Well, it lifted up back here, the belly. And they didn't think about flattening that top or trying to lift this back up. All they did was glue the braces back. And now the braces are glued back with the top in this condition. The only way to correct that would either be take all the braces out and try to flatten the top out, then put them all back in, assuming you got the top flat, or resetting the neck, which would be much easier, but still a very uh, expensive route to go. If you can see this meter here, we are right here at zero. It's dialed in on zero, sitting right behind the center of the middle of the bridge. If I can hold it still, this is a very sensitive uh, gauge. So there we are, sitting right behind the bridge. We're on zero, okay? Now to measure this deflection, I'm just going to slide the thing out, and you can see the meter start to drop. It's working backwards, actually. And check that out, man. Look how far. I'm trying to hold the uh, the uh, straight edge in the center as much as possible, and it's actually not the center. There's that's more of the center right there, and that's showing. Let's go out a little bit farther here. That's showing just about 60 thousandths difference. I know I'm shaking it all over the place, but like I say, it's a very sensitive uh, tool. You know, and unless I have it mounted onto this uh, straight edge the way it should be, it's not going to be exact. But I'm just showing you, it's about 60 thousandths difference in the side right there where the meter point is now. And, and if I slide the meter back over here, near the center of the guitar there it returns to zero you see so what that's telling us is this edge of the guitar right here is fifty thousandths lower than the uh, plane of the guitar right here behind the bridge is in the center of the bridge that's how much belly it has so fifty thousandths and fifty thousandths on this other side over here you count. You got to count both sides. That's a hundred thousandths, man, of belly the guitar has. Really, very shameful, very uh, disturbing and upsetting to think the thing needs a neck reset, but it really does to fix it right. So uh, hold on, let me uh, gather my thoughts once again.
checked all the frets and every single fret works. Man, this thing really sounds good too. too screwed up for to play anything but That was an old fog hat tune I used to play. No more buzzing and rattling though, that all that's completely gone. Just too screwed up to play it, but it's a shame this guitar, like I say, it's uh, in its very near future is going to need a neck reset. You know, I hate to say that, but uh, or there's proof I showed it to you when the bridge plane of the ridge becomes higher than the plane of the fretboard. You know, and you can only get check this out, man. Look how low this saddle is. That was another thing I wanted to point out. Look how low the saddle is right here. I mean, you can't lower that any more than that. Now, you could uh, shave the bridge, you know, and then that would expose more saddle there. You could lower the saddle more. That's a cheap uh, workaround from uh, a neck reset. But you see how low that saddle is. I mean, it is, man, it is cranked down there. Look at that. The saddle is very, very, very low, and it's not going to go any lower than that. I mean, that's rock bottom right there. There's no way you're going to get that saddle any lower. It's got uh, some uh, brake angle coming up where the string comes up out of the pin hole and goes over the saddle. There's still a pretty decent angle there. But, uh, you know, that's all the saddle you can take away. That is all of the saddle. You can never take any more away from that saddle. And that's pretty much proof the neck's going to have to be reset, you know, really to fix this guitar right. Well, that's a shame, too, because, man, it sounds so good.
can't play it, but uh, one of these days I'm going to be able to play guitar again. Uh, I don't know, guys. I'll talk to the owner and tell him about all these problems. You know, the guitar could last a long time, and not, you could play it like this. I mean, the thing plays easy. You can see how very low the action is. Look at that, man. Look how low that action is. Now, there again, like I say, when you get down here, it rises very quickly. I can't see the camera well enough to tell if I'm flat with it or not, but but you can see how high the uh, the action is here as compared to up here. I mean, it's, you know, but there's nothing you can do about that because I think whoever glued those braces back, glued them back while this was bellied up and while this was sunk in and still bellied up and still sunk in and probably always going to be that way because the braces are glued in there now with it that way. I tried humidifying the crap out of it and it helped a little bit but it didn't flatten it back out or anywhere near. So you know the only other alternative like I say is either shave the bridge to expose more saddle and then we can take more off the saddle and in turn lower the action more or reset the neck or you know the thing may last five years ten years eight years and never move anymore and stay just like that you know you just don't know about these things if it's taken care of and the proper uh, humidity levels are maintained the moisture content in the wood is maintained over time you know it may never ever get any worse the thing plays easy now it's just my hands are so fucked up I can't play it which is usually the case these days I haven't had time to practice I've had so much work to do I just haven't been practicing So I'll talk to the owner anyway and I'll find out what he wants to do. Uh, I would recommend not resetting the neck right now, just waiting. Like I say, you may never have to, but you probably will. In the near future before very long, probably going to have to reset the neck on this guitar. So anyways, uh, there you go. I hope you guys uh, picked up a few tips through this. Uh, this was a short like series, I think only a couple of videos. As of now, you may see this guitar again. We may be resetting the neck, I don't know. I'll do whatever the owner tells me to do, but uh, as far as right now, we're on hold until I hear from him. I got the intonation, by the way, dead on the money on every string. According to the tuner, they're dead on the money now. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was uh, thrilling for you. It's been quite a day here, but then again, that's why they call it the house that never sleeps, because it never does. Shit going on all the time, 24-7. Probably the Harmony K, Harmony Body K neck guitar we're resetting the neck on. That might be up next. Or we may not be finished with this one. I'll wait and see what the owner says. But uh, this is a great sounding guitar. I'm going to buff it up too for the owner and make it look real nice. i got fingerprints all over it, so I'll clean it up for him. Cheers. Thanks for watching. See you very soon. Thanks for your support. Get you a t-shirt, baby. If you ain't got one yet. Order one. Got videos about it. Check them out. Cheers.